afternoon and thank you for joining us in our Resilience Matters series. Today we are delighted to be joined by Jackie Price, who's the Centre Manager for Cancer Support Centre in Sutton Coalfield, who supports adults affected by cancer and where Alison also volunteers. So welcome Jackie, great to see you. Thank you, Cathy. It's great to be here, a bit nervous, but I'm sure it will be fine. <laughs> Nothing to be nervous about, Jackie. <laughs> So Jackie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, I'm Jackie and I've got the real privilege of being the manager of the Cancer Support Centre, um, a small charity. We've only got the one building, um, but we've got a big reach and our clients will come from literally the whole of the West Midlands. So Solihull, Sandwell, Derby, Tamworth, Litchfield, all the way around. Um, and we will support anybody who's affected by cancer, um, whether they've got a diagnosis or they have or the person who is supporting them and helping them through that diagnosis. You know, um, people will come to us at so many different stages of their journey. It might be they've just been diagnosed. Um, it might be that they're coming to terms with having had uh, body changing surgery. Um, going through chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and managing and coping with the changes that those bring um, to the body. Um, or when they've completed all their NHS treatment and they think, yeah, yeah, I've got this and I'm through it, then something happens maybe a year or two down the line that uh, triggers something and all of a sudden they'll go to pieces and everything that they went through suddenly comes back on them um, because they haven't dealt with those things. Um, they were managing fine. So um, all of those people will come to us um, for all of those different reasons. Um, and in the same case, the people who are caring and supporting them. Um, when you uh, care for somebody, when you love somebody, then you want to take things away. You want to remove them. Um, you want to make things better. Um, but in this case, it's really difficult to know what to do, what to say, how to react, um, because you can't take it away. You can't make it better. Um, so the person who is supporting needs a similar amount of support in my eyes to that person going through the actual diagnosis and the treatment so yeah. yeah what an amazing job you do to help all those people and and i'll be completely honest you know i felt really uncomfortable about this session um i'm really fortunate um i've never had cancer and you know we talk about resilience and mindset and and normally there's a right you know you can be positive and you can do all of these things and when it's this situation I feel uncomfortable not even knowing the right thing to say, or even in this interview, you know. So I wonder, you know, how, how do you even help somebody be resilient when they've received such devastating news? I think the biggest thing is just being there, mm. just being there and being alongside them. Um, we, we know that um, our clients... Uh, lose and I mean that in the not in the passing away dying way but lose a lot of their friends and their family when they start going through treatment simply because people don't know what to say they don't know how to react and sometimes the natural thing to do is to take a step back and then you take another step back and eventually you haven't been interacting um, for such a long period of time it's actually become difficult to make yeah. that contact and have that discussion again. But, you know, I would always say to everybody, you know, keep keep talking. You don't need to watch what you say. Just be honest. Mm. Um, and just say, you know, how are you doing today? I can't, I don't understand what you're going through, but I'm here. If you want to talk, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm just thinking, so the people who kind of walk into your centre, how do you help them sort of like build their resilience or, or is it just a case of recognising how resilient they really are? Um, I don't think anybody knows how resilient they are until they actually get into 
um, a situation that demands it, to be honest. You know, resilience to me is all about how you react to something that's happening um, and the way that you deal with it and the way that you move forward. And that will be different for absolutely everybody. Um, I believe it's it's a learnt response um, through your experiences quite often in that you've gone through in the past as well as a mindset and a determination so you know you don't com you don't consciously say i'm going to build my resilience today and i'm going to i'm going to be resilient because we don't think or even talk in those sorts of terms and i believe that if you said you said to somebody how resilient are you they'd go what because <laughs> it doesn't that can be quantified you just can't quantify it yeah. And I do think it's quite amazing with some of the people that, you know, we've worked with in the past, like, yeah, they, they, they don't realise how much they've gone through and the, the new tools and skills that they've learned or the way they've, like, spoke up, spoken up for themselves the way they never would have done in the past. And, yeah. you know, because I, I do remember when I was diagnosed with cancer the first time and um, I won't remember going to the hospital and this young consultant turned around to me and said, I can see you're a woman that likes to be in charge. Can I just tell you now, you need to just let go and let us do it. And I remember thinking, no, where am I letting that happen? You know, I, want, you know, I want to be able to be part of my own recovery. Um, but the NHS was kind of like, we're just going to do this to you now. Whereas at the centre, it's we're going to give you things to help you support yourself, which that builds resilience yeah absolutely you know we, we're there for the clients that's number one you know so people don't feel alone um we will show them um and and teach them different ways that they can help themselves we have a help yourself program for instance um and one of the biggest things in that uh help yourself arsenal that toolbox um is breathing now we all do it, but if you breathe in the correct way, then it can help you to manage your stress and anxiety. It, you can help you manage your feelings of sickness. It can help with um, fatigue. It can help with um, pain management. Um, it can help with so many things uh, that you can actually, those things, those sort of things you can express, but actually it helps your body inside as well to relax. Um, and it's when we are relaxed that our uh, our innate um, healing, our innate uh, need for our body to make things better, if you like, mm -hmm. it's, that, it's at that point that it's able to step in and say, okay, let's get on with it. Let's fight whatever's happening at the moment. Um, so breathing is a biggie, massive yeah. thing for me. Um, we teach them ways that they can relax. We can teach them ways that they can use something like mindfulness. Um, mindfulness, when you say to people, they think, oh, I, I haven't got time for all of that. But actually, you can ha have a, a private mindfulness session, if you like, just in a couple of minutes where you just sit shut your eyes if you want to and just be just listen to what's going on um just take everything in just chill out and relax and that can be immensely um empowering and um uh, refreshing almost you know and give you things that you can do uh yourself so yeah we're all about um building the self-esteem um, Alison's just said that, you know, our clients, when they go through the NHS system, they're told uh, where to go, who to see, how high to jump, for how long, um, uh, what you can and what you can't do. And they're actually stripped of all their self-esteem, all their confidence um, and the lack of control because you're told all of these things um is just incredible and but one of the fundamentals at the center is giving control back 
and yeah. giving choice back mm. to our clients. So, you know, we we will give them choices of, um, for instance, someone will come to us and they might be, we'll say to them, uh, what two things, if we could wave a magic wand today, what two things do you want some help with today? And they might say, um, oh, I'm so anxious, I, I've, I've got to go to see my consultant again I don't know what he's going to say and I really don't know what to do or they might say I've got uh, so much pain in this area um, it's from the treatment I've had um, it could be any of it could be a multitude of things that they say but we'll look at the things that we do so the complementary therapies that we offer and we will say okay um, if you've got this pain um, we could we could send you for reflexology. We could send you for um, an Emmet session. We could send you to see the acupuncture. This this will benefit this. This will benefit that. That will benefit that. Which one do you fancy? What do you want to try mm. first? So it's all okay. about starting from scratch and starting to build, again, the choice, starting to build the self-esteem back, try, starting to build the confidence back. Um, and that's that's really, really important, yeah. really important. Yeah. Um, there's other things that we can do about um, uh, taking back control, sort of touched on it there. It might be setting goals and sort of going, okay, um, we you have the, the this anxiety or maybe we've got fatigue we're really really tired how can we work through that um and perhaps we'll say okay try doing some yoga um and this time next month see how far you've gone so you've gone for um or the walking group for instance i'm jumping around here sorry no, um, it seems to be so it's fascinating it's um, exercise is a big thing for people. And when you're feeling really ill, it's the last thing on earth you want to do. It really is. Um, but it's really, really important. And, you know, if the minimum that you do is a walk around the garden, your goal might be, well, next week I'm going to go down to the shop. Or and the next week I'm going to go that far. And next month I'm going to get into town. You know, so it's setting those goals. Nothing, you know, major. You're not going to climb the mountain or anything like that. But just setting a goal that moves you forward uh, a little bit. Um, yeah. That's the thinking's really changed on things like exercise, hasn't it? So it's advanced and it's 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 a lot more empowering than it used to be because you know people used to be afraid of, of like taking any sort of exercise, but now it's very different, isn't it, Jackie? Yeah, it is absolutely. Yeah, people, oh, people. So, well, the nurses would say to you, or your consultant would say, just chill out, take it easy, do something if you want to, don't do something. You need to let your body catch up with itself and and cope with the chemo or the radiotherapy, whatever it is. Um, but now, very definitely, the um, the uh, reports of uh, I can't think of the right word. Um, the proof has actually come through that if you can manage um, five minutes uh, getting you don't have to get hot and sweaty but just get you get your blood going round get your heart moving then that can really really improve increase your <clears throat> recovery it can increase your body's ability to 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 cope to get through to come out the other end and there's a lot of proof coming out now that um if you're able to do a, a reasonable amount a reasonable level of exercise all the way through your treatment then your outcomes overall are much much better um because your body's in the best place to because you're feeling fitter your body's working still um and uh, I can actually testify to that. Absolutely. My my consultant, I had my own diagnosis of breast cancer back in 2017. And 
my consultant um, said to me, uh, you know, Jackie, there's there's a lot of um, proof out there at the moment that's saying, you know, do your exercise and keep going all the way through. And, and I looked at him and went, oh, it's as much as I can do to get down the bottom of the garden sometimes. There's no way I'm going to do that. But the reality at the end of my treatment now and, and going forwards, um, it's been five years now, that I'm still battling to get my, um, my physical exercise levels up to a point where my heart's not pounding completely, just going up the stairs, yeah. you know, and I'm finding it really difficult to get that level of um, physicality back. Um, it seems bonkers, but yeah, it's quite scary at the same time when you go upstairs and your heart's going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> keep going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep going, but you know, it goes back to normal fairly quickly, which is a good thing, sort of thing. Relief, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, if you can. Um, and I say to everybody now that I speak to, and they're going, oh, I don't think I can do some exercise, and I'll say, You've got to do it, learn from my mistakes, just do it. Mm. Um, so yeah yeah absolutely it's empowering and motivating for the individual as well because if you've got somebody who always goes cycling or who likes to go swimming or whatever you know to suddenly say to them no you can't do that you know that sort of takes away a little part of who they are whereas if you say you can be part of your own recovery that control is back, that feeling, yeah. yes, you can do something. And then mindset, which is what we're all about, you mm. know, the mindset mm. is I'm helping myself every day. I mm. am part of my own journey through this and I'm doing everything I can to look after myself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. More positive. Taking a more positive outlook is um, is a big thing that we, we talk to our clients about. Um, and there's a lot of debate that sort of says, you know, how can you tell people to be positive when they're going through this? Uh, it seems like a bit of a, you know, contra. <laughs> it doesn't make yeah. sense at all. But actually, there are always things that um, you can take as a positive. Um, uh, I had one. <laughs> I had one client who we were, we were talking about um, being more positive. And um, and she said uh, said to me, she said, you know, Jackie, the first thought I have in the morning when I wake up is another day. Yeah. What am I going to do today? Um, and planning and going forward. So, you know, she was very much of the view that, you know, each day she was palliative. Um, she sad sadly passed away now, but in her mind i'm here for another day what am i going to do today so it was very much a positive yay i'm still alive which sounds quite flippant but for her it was big it was a real mm -hmm. positive oh. for her um that's taking it to the extreme really but um for others it's more about uh okay woken up you're feeling pretty lousy um well the sun's shining today look at that yeah, it's going to be a good day today. So starting with that when you get up in the morning, um, rather than, oh, I feel really tired. I'm not I'm not feeling well today. I think I'll stay in bed. You know, if you if you start with those thoughts, that's exactly where you're going to be. Yeah, it's a bit self-fulfilling, isn't it, really? Absolutely, absolutely. Whereas if you turn it around and view things a little bit more from a positive perspective um it's it's empowering it yeah. builds your self-esteem it builds your confidence and you can actually uh, move forward and uh, yeah have a good day yeah yeah, yeah. and i think yeah. what you've just described is that actually there's always positives um, which is, again, something that I say, I find, you know, I'm always nervous about to be this cheery, mm -hmm. like, oh, there's a positive when, whether you've got the right to, to, to be positive. And I know a couple of close friends who have had cancer and are, fortunate, you know, fortunately here with us still, they live their life so well now. 
Mm -hmm. Because of that experience, I feel they'll go on that holiday, they will see beauty and everything that maybe people who haven't just passed us as by, you know? Yeah. You know, do you find that with people who have? Yeah. Absolutely. People plan what they want to do. We, we, we're here, don't we? People have bucket lists of things that they want to do. Um, that's that's quite a, a big thing. And actually, that's not just peculiar to cancer. When we have, we've just been through COVID, you know, mm. horrendous situation the last couple of years. And I, I know I personally know quite a few people who have completely reassessed their life mm -hmm. and have been doing maybe a job that uh, they didn't really get much out of. They were just turning up, doing a job and going home, weren't feeling particularly fulfilled about it. And they've decided that, yeah, I need to do something that's good for me. So they've mm -hmm. jacked that in and found yeah. something else that they want to do because they're living for what they want um, yeah. and that's a really empowering way of viewing everything you know what mm. what do I want to do um, what do I want to do today uh, let's plan that out okay what am I going to do tomorrow you know mm. and, and actually doing it in that way um, we get to experience a lot more um we will achieve <laughs> a lot more we're always so busy doing our jobs that we just um you, or you said it yourself just now Kathy you, things bypass us and yeah. um you sort of miss that opportunity to to do the things that you want to do and mm. uh, if one thing has taught me uh, being at the center it's taught me that you've got to do what you want to do now yeah um, you never know what's going to be around the corner so if you if you want to go and um climb mount everest you know have a go do it yeah um, you might not get another chance if the opportunity mm. there do it um yeah definitely definitely totally and and i think from, from there's a few things that kind of strike me there there's a piece about being grateful and not putting things off some of the bigger things but it's not necessarily yeah. just about the bigger things it's about just being grateful yeah. for the sun shining yeah. and all that and and i tell you what surprised me i mean when you were talking about obviously breathing relaxing some of those um therapies that you offer as well i've never considered the self-esteem element before mm -hmm. just meaning and i guess that's the same maybe for all you know for a lot of trauma situations because it is kind of trauma isn't it you know mm -hmm. how how that can affect your self-esteem and, and what we can do to help ourselves and i think you said alice and some of that is about gaining some control mm -hmm. helping in some way you know is there anything mm -hmm. else you think people can do to help build their self-esteem after after anything like that um one one of the really big things um for me was um we we had a, a visit from the the wonderful zoe bennett the motivation motivational queen she came and gave a talk um it was over zoom at the time because we were in lockdown but um really uh no we saw her before lockdown then we did another one that's right but she was all about um empowerment and the way that we talk to ourselves and <clears throat> she spoke about um using a mantra she spoke about um focusing on our achievements um and she spoke about um using the way that you hold yourself and talking to yourself in the mirror and um within uh, within the Help Yourself program now, we are all about using those things that you can do. So um, the Amy Cuddy power pose um, is incredibly powerful. And, and I use that in front of the mirror. felt a bit of a talking to myself. But actually, you know, the, the way that um, I felt afterwards was was incredible. And, you know, my I, I had two 
I had two affirmations, um, one that was quite long, <laughs> one that was very short. And um, the one that was quite long was, um, I'm beautifully and wonderfully made by an awesome God who loves me. I can get through this. And that to me was what I literally recited to myself as I was going through chemotherapy, trying not to think of this poison going into my body. You know, I was like, okay, it, my body can cope with this. Um, and that would shorten to, you know, I can get through this, I can do this. Um, that was immensely powerful uh, in building my coping mechanisms. Um, and yeah, she, she, she spoke about listing your achievements, which uh, I'd never really thought about from that perspective before. But when I did, it was um, very, uh, I did that. Oh, yeah, I did that. You know, um, so going back to when I was younger and um, my youngest daughter was born, um, cerebral palsy and uh, needs 100 percent support. So it was um, I managed that. I got through that with the family. You know, I coped with that. Lizzie's a very happy um, and well adjusted child. She's still got the same challenges that she had when she was born, but. I know she's happy. Mm. Then the things that happen through work and my achievements um, through that, helping at the church, raising three quarters of a million to get it refurbed, you know, I did that. Yeah, yeah go right. me. <laughs> um, you know, right through to at the Cancer Support Centre and the, the difference that we make to, to the clients. Um, I think one of the one of the biggest buzzes I get out of um, working at the centre um, is when somebody comes through, in through the door and you can tell by their whole uh, physical um, appearance, the way they're holding themselves, that they they feel like they've got the world on their yeah. shoulder. You know um, that they are trying to cope with what they've just heard um and they you they come into the center and they want to have a chat with somebody um sometimes it's through floods of tears sometimes it's quite mechanical that way they talk to you um but what i love is the difference between how they were when they came in yeah um and the way they walk out after you've sat and had a chat, it might not be me, it might be one of the volunteers who are talking to them. But they go out, you can see their shoulders are up a little bit, their heads up, they might be smiling, um, they might not be smiling, but they might be thinking, okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was, and I'm in a good place. You know, I know there's help here, someone here will be able to help me. It's not the end of the world because that's often the feeling that you get. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Got a cancer diagnosis. That's it. But quite often it isn't. Sometimes yeah. it is. Yes. So quite yeah. often it isn't anymore. And to see the difference, you know, when they come in and when they go out, that's that's an incredible um, feeling. And uh, yeah, can't get away from that. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. No, 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 not at all, Jackie. I was just thinking what a wonderful <laughs> gift you give people and what a purposeful life you lead. And I've got nothing, but I'm just in awe of you. So, and I can't believe we've hit half an hour and um, oh, yeah. so much um, information to share. And do you know what? You know, the hope is you know, there'll be somebody on this, this call who is either... Um, going through an illness whether that's cancer or somebody else or supporting people who might be shying away from that conversation but you know you've given some really great messages and advice and tips to help them and hopefully others to help them as well so for can that, i just go in jackie what's the website because i can never remember the website what's the website for people uh, suttoncancersupport.org yeah. brilliant and um yeah keep up the excellent work there jackie and um 
my um yeah my appreciativeness i'm sure on behalf of all of everybody who goes to your thank center you. is there um but yeah thank you so much jackie we really appreciate your time today um what i would say you know even if our network is to say we'd love to um talk to a cross-section of people so we help and help as many people as possible talking about mindset and how that can help us if any of our network would like to be interviewed or get in touch with us um please contact us through our website which is i've got this.co.uk um on there we also have 101 ways to build mental strength which is um for free so please go in and have a look um but until then thank you so much again jackie and um, we will catch up with you next time thanks jackie thank you. thanks